Okay. So basically, we already covered this many times before. Uh, Pearson Chi Square, who came up with this test, it was Carl Pearson. Yeah, it was way back in 1904. Then Fisher came along. Fisher came up with the likelihood ratio test. I can't remember exactly the the year. Uh, so, but never mind. I know you all can find out. Then later on, we had the Cochrane test in 1954. Then we had the mental Hansel test in 1959. Then we had the Breslow test in 1980. And we have the Theron test in 1985. Okay, so we got so many different. So today, in fact, we're going to cover 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And all these six tests are different. All these six tests are different. Okay. So, let's go to the next one. So, when we do, when we say this mental handle test, in fact, it is an, uh, an amalgam, a combination of the Cochrane mental handle test. So, in fact, it is not one name, not just the mental handle test. It is the Cochrane mental handle test. So we are doing a combination of all these tests in one go. Okay, so why do we do the Cochrane Mental Hazard Test? Basically, you want to control for confounders. When you have a dichotomous risk factor and a dichotomous outcome. So if your univariate analysis are all using chi-square, so the best thing for you to do when you want to do a uh, multivariate test, you have a choice of a logistic regression, multiple logistic regression, and the mental Hansel test. Okay, but in terms of for cancer, you will you will see that most of the papers on cancer, they tend to use the Cochrane mental Hansel test. Why? They want to adjust for confounding factors when analyzing the relationship between the dichotomous risk factor and the dichotomous outcome. So for this uh, data on catecholamine and coronary heart disease, it is data for the Evans County. And uh, as I stated just now, I gave you the, the original data so we can run the analysis for everything here. Sorry, let's look at the notes. So basically, uh, we are saying that, you are saying that people with high catecholamines uh, of high risk for coronary heart disease. What does it mean by high catecholamine? People who are highly stressed. Okay, Dr. Azmi, do Iron Man still get heart attack? Why? He is teaching statistics. Highly stressed. Why highly stressed? It is a, le a lecture that nobody can understand, but he still have to teach and he still have to make sure people pass. So highly stressed. So I end up with coronary heart disease. So how do they decide? So they look at the catecholamine level, whether it is low or high. Those with the low catecholamine, they regard as not stress. Those with the high catecholamine, it is regarded as stress. So then they follow up over time in Evans County. How many of those with the high catecholamine end up with coronary heart disease? And how many with the low catecholamine end up with the coronary heart disease? Problem now, we know already there's a difference. If you're young, you're not at high risk. If you're old like me, you are at high risk. Okay. The other thing is about ECG changes. Some of you, when you were born, already got ECG changes. Okay. Because uh, there's some defect in your wiring of your heart. So, end up with higher susceptibility to coronary heart disease. Okay. The wolf Parkinson. Syndrome. So they already got the EC changes, exercise they die. Okay. So those without EC changes are F of less higher risk to develop coronary heart disease. So they say the crude OR is 2.86, sky square 14.98. So these, these are your results. Okay. So problem now, if you look here, okay. 22%, 9%, okay, you expect this one to be significant, 
Why those who are highly stressed end up with higher rate of getting coronary heart disease compared to those who are not highly stressed. Okay, so right now we suspect that age and ECG changes has a role to play. They may be confounding factors. So therefore, what do we do? We have to control for age and ECG changes. So how do we control? We came out with the different layers. Okay. So we select those. Is that age less than 55? No ECG changes. Age less than 55? Got uh, ECG changes. Age more than 55? Got no ECG changes. Age 50, uh, more than 55? Also got ECG changes. So we want to see if we certify by age and age changes, can we see any difference in terms of the odds ratio? So if you look here, if the person is young and has no age changes, the odds ratio is 2.16. The odds ratio is 2.16. If the age is less than 55, has age changes, the odds ratio is 1.59. So what does it mean? It means that in this age group, less than 55, no easy changes, stress is a higher predictor of getting coronary heart disease, 2.16. Okay. Compared to the other group, once you have easy changes, the contribution of stress is less because now it is only 1.59. Okay, easy changes make this thing become less. So which means this one is also a contributor towards getting coronary heart disease. So now we look at another one. We look at high catecholamine level, low catecholamine, low catecholamine level, relationship to coronary heart disease, based on the old people and no ECG, no ECG changes. So if you look here, if among the old people, you end up with higher difference. 23% versus 12%. Why we say higher? Because the odds ratio is now 2.16. Okay. So you look here, you got from 2.16 1.59, 2.14. So, this one is 2.14. So, H has modified a bit from 2.16 to become 2.14. But when we brought in the EC changes, wow, even worse. It drops to 1.72. So, you can see here, 1.59, 1.72. So the contribution from the ECG is less because you have the this age issue, but now we also have the contribution of the high catecholamine. So this one end up with uh, odds ratio of 1.72. But right now, if you look back at the start, our odds ratio is fantastic, 2.86. But when you go by the certify, okay, 2.86 is so big. But now it not become for the certified level, it is lower. 2.16, 1.59, 2.14, 1 1.72. So somehow H and ECG had an effect on the uh, coronary heart disease besides the high, catecho high catecholamine contribution. So when you arrange it like this, you can see that it is 1.59, 1.72, 2.14, Suddenly we become 2.86. This does not make sense. Why? By right, the combined one should be part of this value not outside. So it should be somewhere between 1.72 and 2.14.
not as high as 2.86. So now you have to adjust. You have to adjust using the mental, the Cochrane mental lens. Okay. So if you look at the the confidence interval, how to calculate? Okay. So it's stated is now you can see that the weird thing now, the weird thing now, for each one of the strata, they are not significant. Doctor, why you say it is not significant? Because the OS ratio crosses the value of 1. The OS ratio crosses the value of 1. So they are not significant. The combined one is significant. Why? Because it does not cross the value of 1. But it is not accurate. Because 2.8. It, it is... Uh, highly elevated, highly boosted. Okay, something must be wrong inside the data set. Okay. So please take note of the formula on how to calculate odds ratio for OR. I was informed that you have been taught how to calculate the odds ratio CI. So therefore, this one I am allowed to ask in exam. So you uh, take note of this. You must be able to calculate this. Okay, how to calculate the OS ratio, the CI. Okay. So take note, despite stratification, stress constantly leads to higher odds, although not significant of getting coronary heart disease. There seems to be little effect modification due to age and ECG. The odds are similar, but the combined table is stronger and highly significant. So we need to adjust. We need to adjust. You need an adjusted summary, you measure and adjust for the effect of age and ECG. Okay, so I keep saying to you all. The, so, uh, the formula is Cochrane Mental Hansel. Yes. Cochrane came up with this thing first. Mental Hansel modified it. So that's why they call it the Cochrane Mental Hansel. Okay. So you can see the formula is like this. Okay. Doctor cannot memorize. Why you need to memorize? Because formula not given in formula sheet. Lucky you all this year, open book exam. Okay. So can refer to notes. How to memorize AD over BC? Odd ratio is AD over BC. The formula is AD minus CB. Then you square it, divide by N. Then you put all the other formula at the bottom and they are all according to their gang. Okay. So where this thing come from? A, B, A plus B, C plus D, A plus C, B plus D. This one is A plus B. This one is B plus C. This one is A plus D. This one is B plus D. Okay. That is why you had this formula like this. Okay, so this is all the outer cells. Okay. So you put in the formula. Okay, please take note, they have this sum at the, in front. So when you have this sum in front, means you have to combine all the calculation. So the sum for cell A, the sum for cell B, the sum for cell C. The sum for cell D. So why 4? So we got uh, one respecter and two confounder. So because when we got one respecter and one outcome plus two confounder, you end up with four tables. If there is only one potential confounder, there is only two tables. 
if there are three potential co-founder, you have eight table. Okay, so that is how you calculate. Okay, how do we know two, four, or eight? It is two by the power of one, two by the power of two, two by the power of three. So if you have only one confounding factor, two by the power of one, you end up with two table. If you have two confounding factor, it's two by the power of two. So four, four, uh, four stratification. If you have three confounding factor, two by the power of three, so you end up with eight, so you end up having eight stratification table. So here in this case, there's only two confounding factor. So there are only four stratification tables. Okay. okay. Just a bit of explanation. This is not 1.257. This is 1 times 257. This is 17 times 7. So the dot is not decimal point. Okay. The dot is... Multi multiply multiplication symbol because every year I get the question so please wake up take note the dot is multiply okay the dot is multiply okay so end up with these answers so your Cochrane mental Hansel value is 4.15 4.15 since it is 4.15, we look at the uh, chi square table. We look at degree of freedom of 1. So 4.15 is larger than 3.84, but still smaller than 5.02. Okay. It's larger than 3.84, but smaller than 5.02. So the p value is between 0 0.025 and 0 0.05. 0 0.025 and 0 0.05 that is if you calculate manually so there is a significant relationship between catecholamine level and coronary disease after adjusting simultaneously for H and ECG so the PV is less than 0 0.05 the chi square metal is 16 point oh sorry not 16 okay it's 4 point I want All right. So how to do this? There's this in real life. Click analyze. Cross tab. Oh. Okay. Click OK. Okay, now we have it. Okay, Santala. Okay, so you have the normal and young. This is one layer. Then you have the uh, normal and old. This is one layer. Okay, then we have the animal CG and young is one layer. Abnormal and old is one layer. Please take note that this one is only for version 18, 19, 20. If version 17, you end up with the same table that what I had uh, before. Same like the other one. Okay, so this one, uh, how come so different? Because we don't need this one. Okay. I'm going to show you. I'm going to delete the, this one. This one, Tamau. This one also, Tamau. Tamau, tamau. 
Okay, so the four tables is just this: normal and young, normal and old, abnormal and young, abnormal and old. Okay, so that's the correct one. So let's clean up this one. All right. Okay, so that is the the analysis. Next is the results. Let's look at the results. Okay, how about this one? Don't care. This one are all not significant. This is chi square for each one. So chi square for each one. So as I said, it's now the rest are all not significant except for the combined one. So this one all tak pakai. This one also tak pakai. Okay. So yeah, as I said just now, they are all not, they are all not not significant. Eh? They are not significant. They don't have the numbers. Okay. So risk estimate, as stated just now, two point one six, two point one four. Okay. Then we have the one point five nine, one point seven eight. Again, this one the total we don't want. Okay. 2.86 same 2.86 same like ours Alright So that is all the different Odds ratio Okay so this one same like our table earlier, but what is important is our mental handle the same or not. Okay, this is critical. Eh? This is what happened last year. Ramai fail. Please pay attention. Okay, we ended at this one. We say it is uh, even after adjusting for H and uh, EC changes, the it is still significant. Okay, so our problem is the value. The value here is four point one five. So you look here at the output table. There is no four point one five. Okay, so if you look here, the 4.15 is here, 4.19. Okay, 4.19. Yes, okay, this one is easy. This one is easy. This one mental lens only. How to calculate the odds ratio. The next one, uh, the rest of the one will be tough. Okay, mental lensel is easy because it's AD over BC. Very easy. So you just get, you need to get the adjusted OR. To get the adjusted OR, you have to convert the value. Okay, because we know really the crude OR is something wrong. Okay, how can you have the crude OR larger than all the OR of all the, certif all the certification? So to get the common odds ratio, they have this what they call the mental Hansel estimator of the common odds ratio. So this is the formula. AD divided by N divided by BC over N. Please take note. You have to do it for every cell. So this is the formula. Eh? Okay. So what happened now? Because you got four table, you got four certification table. Everyone we have to do. 
So we have to do based on every one of the table A, B, C, D. Okay. So again, uh, being very kind, I show you how. Okay. So I put now. You remember that the the table here. Okay. You have the first part, the first table. We have the second table. We have the third table, and we have the fourth table. So we are going to combine all the four tables. And then you get the new OS ratio. And the new OS ratio is 1.89. Okay. So the adjusted OS ratio is 1.89. And the confidence interval, I already showed you the formula. Okay. For the confidence interval for one table. But the problem now, this one is an adjusted one. So therefore, you cannot use that value. Instead, you have to use the mental Hansel value. Okay. So what is the value? Is one plus minus 1.96 divided by the the square root of the mental Hansel. The square root of the chi square mental Hansel. So you just now you, so you had 1.89, the odds ratio that you got. 1 plus minus 1.96. Eh? This one Z1 minus alpha divided by uh, Z by uh, 1 minus alpha is Z95%. Okay. So Z95% Z is 1.96. Okay. Doctor, where 1.96 come from? Jadual A1. Table A1. So the square root of 4.15, you get 2.04. So 1. So you end up with this 1.96 divided by 2.04. You get the value of 0 0.962. This value of 0 0.962 is when you convert it, become like this. 1.89 by the power of 0 0.038 until 1.89 by the power of 1.962. So when you calculate this, you get the value of 1.02 and 3.49. On your calculator, as the x by the power of y, you can use the x by the power of y to calculate this value. I just realized I don't know where is my calculator. <laughs> okay. Never mind. You all got your calculators. You all can calculate. I got two calculators. Why put the both of them? Oh, there it is. Okay. Sorry, I cannot show it to you, but uh, you're on your calculator, got the value of x and y, okay, got the value of x and y, sorry, x by the power of y, x and y, line. okay, so you use the x by the power of y to calculate this value of 1.9 by the power of 0 0.038. Okay, I'm, since I cannot show you on the calculator, I'm going to show you on the computer. Okay. Okay. You see this? X by the power of Y. Okay. So, uh, it is 1.89. 1.89 1.89 by the power of 0 0.038 Okay 1.89 x by the power of y okay 0 0.038 Okay equals to 1.02 So I'm going to repeat this again. The other one is 1.962. 1.962. Okay. So I'm going to click all clear. Okay. 1.89 x by the power of y. Okay. So 1.962 equivalent to 3.48. Okay, so that is how we do this using the calculator. So please take note, practice on your calculator. 
So okay, so we already shown you how this thing is done. Okay, so conclusion: there is a significant relationship between catecholamine and coronary heart disease. Adjusted simultaneously for age and ECG. The p-value is less than 0 0.05. Uh, for the chi when we do the chi-square for mental hazard test. Okay, so the adjusted OR is 1.89. The confidence interval is 1.02 till 3.49. Since CI did not include the value of 1, it is significant. Therefore, those who are stressed have a significantly higher two times risk of developing coronary heart disease compared to those not stressed after adjusting for age and ECG. Yes. So that is uh, Cochrane Mental Hansel and the uh, OS ratio. So we have the Cochrane Mental Hansel chi-square test and we have the Cochrane Mental Hansel OS ratio. So please take note where do we get the OS ratio. So just now we remember, we, I told you you have to adjust for the new OS ratio. For the new common OS ratio is this one. The table is mental Hansel common OS ratio estimate. The value is this 1.891. The CI is 3.3, 1.017 and 3.516. Okay, that's slightly different because we do we round up some of the numbers they don't round up some of the numbers so they end up with slightly different figures but quite similar so 1.017 and 3.516 so we ours is slightly different okay what is important what is important so for the odds ratio 1.891 Okay, it is different. It is different than the original one. How much different? Okay, 2.86 versus 1.89. So now you have to justify. You say it is different. If the odds ratio, if the odds ratio is different by 10%. Different by 10%, then it is uh, significant. Okay, so there are two styles. You get the difference of problem. It's the larger minus the smaller. So you got 2.86 minus 1.891. But our problem now, what is your denominator? So you got two denominator that we can use is either it is the adjusted one, 1.891, or it is the original crude ratio, crude OS ratio, which is 2.86. If you follow EPIC style, EPIC style, they use the adjusted one. If you go by statistic in style, they use the original crude OS ratio. Okay. So you can see here, they are different. Okay, larger than 10%. Therefore, age and EC changes are positive confounding factors for the catecholamine. Okay, so they are positive confounding factors for the catecholamine. Alright, so that is the story. So please take note, this is Breslow day test. Number one, why we need the breast and day test? Breast and day test, they check for the homogeneity of the OS ratio. One. Two, why we need to know the homogeneity of the OS ratio? If it is not homogeneous, there is interaction. If it is homogeneous, there is no interaction. Okay. What is the formula? This is the formula. Where we get it? From the breast and day test original book, original publication. I don't understand this because I cannot calculate. I converted to become this. This one I can calculate. Okay. So we need to get the chi, we need to get this 
breast load day we have value. So take note, eh, this is the value. When we do the test, we get the value. So we got four stratum. So we need to get the value for each stratum. So this is one stratum. So I'm going to show you how to calculate for one stratum. Okay. Then the other one we have to get is the variance. How do we get this? Okay. First, we get the adjusted odds ratio. I show you already on how to calculate the adjusted odds ratio. It is 1.89. After we get the adjusted odds ratio 1.89, now we make use of the value of the 1.89 to change all the odds ratio of the stratum to become 1.89. Okay. So, this is one example. This is the table uh, 1. Okay, so the table one, we got four tables, remember? So it's table one. For the table one, the odds ratio is not 1.89. So we need to change this one to 1.9. But at the same time, the total values cannot be changed. The total values here cannot be changed. We can only change this one. But we know already, we change this one value, this one changes. Okay, we change this one to become zero, this one become eight. This one change to become two. 5, 6. So automatically everything will change. This one will become 16. Just like your minima test. But now, for the purpose of the breast load day test, the changes is not that much. The changes is very small. How to calculate the changes? This is the formula. AD over BC. AD over BC. Okay. So, but now the ADBC is not this value. The ADBC is now new value. So, how do we get the value? Okay. So, we call this first one, we call it like big A. So, what is the value of this one? The value of this one is 8 minus big A. So, 8 minus big A. What is the value of this one? Okay. Sorry. What is the value of uh, this cell? The value of this cell is 18 minus big A. What is the value of this cell? This val the value of this cell is okay, 274, 274 minus 18 plus A. Okay, minus 18 plus. Why 18 plus A? To get this value. Okay. So that is how they come up with this formula. Doctor, bukan minus minus lah. Yeah. 234 minus 18 minus minus A. So minus minus A become plus A. Okay. So now we don't know the value of A. The only way for us to get the value of A is to do quadratic equation. I don't know how to do that. Give me one year. Next year I teach. <laughs> I know I asked for a year for me to prepare the notes. But apparently it does not require a year to prepare the notes for quadratic equation. It only requires a day. So, uh, yesterday, Ehsan Zamzuri taught me on how to do a quadratic equation. So, I'm adding this to into my lecture. We need to convert the table for each stratum so that the odds ratio become 1.89 okay so we need to adjust one value in one cell the a cell but all the other cell b c and d will also change based on the changes to cell a okay so the cell a you can see there i am coding it as capital a Cell B is 8 minus A. Cell C is 18 minus A. Cell D is 274 minus C. So based on that equation, we summarize it to become 0.89A squared minus 305.14A plus 272.16 equivalent to 0. Okay. So based on this equation, we need to use calculus on the calculator to calculate, in this case, the value of A. Okay. 
So we converted the the, the 0.89a squared minus 305.14a plus 272.16 equivalent to zero to become y equivalent to 0.89x squared minus 305.14x plus 272.16. So on the calculator, we press mode three times. Then we select equation. After that, we press the arrow to the right. Then we select the number two for quadratic equation. Then they will ask the value for A. We enter the value of 0 0.89 for A based on this value, 0 0.89. This is A. Then we enter the value of minus 305.14 for B. This is minus 305.14 for B. Then we enter the value of 272.16 for C. So this is the value, 272.16 for C. When we press equal they will give the answer okay so the answer comes out as x1 equals to 341.959682 and x2 is equivalent of 0 0.89425089 okay so between these two values we cannot use uh, the first value because 341 is too big okay it's too big as you can see here, the table, uh, the total is 282. Therefore, A cannot be 341. So, therefore, A is 0 0.89425. As you can see here, I reduce it to four decimal points. So, it is 0 0.8943. Okay. So, we come up with this table. And based on this table, we continue the, the rest of the calculation. So remember, the aim here is to get this thing to become 1.89. As you can see, the formula is H5 divided by 16. So H5, this 5, uh, times I6, 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 divided by I5. This is I5 uh, times H6. So this one I already calculated for you. You make one, any one of these changes, automatically the rest will change. Because we already set the formula, J5 minus H5. Okay, J5 minus H5, you get this value. So you make change to this one, everything else changes automatically. Okay, so now you see here, I change this one to become 0. This one that will no longer become uh, 1.89. You become 1.88. So this one, I just add the value of 1, it becomes 1.90. So that's what we do. We make changes. This one all copy directly from the other side. Okay, the rest are all copied from the other side. So you only make changes to the yellow form, yellow boxes, and the value changes to become the way it also should become 1.9. Doctor, why we must follow 1.9? Because we show you already, adjusted odds ratio is 1.9. So therefore, if we want to come up with expected value for homogeneity, we want to show that each one of this table, okay, each one of these three terms, 1, 2, 3, 4 three terms, uh, do not, are homogeneous. So to show that they are homogeneous, we have to calculate the original value if they are homogeneous. So expected value is this one. These are expected value. If it is homogeneous at 1.89. So what happened now? You're going to compare the value between this and this, between this and this, between this and this, between this and this. So now we're going to have the difference between observed and expected value. Observed and expected value. So I already show you how to get the value, okay? And I show you how to get the variance. Okay. Now you see, this is the observed value of one. This is the expected value of 0 0.89. So now what happened? You have to get the difference. So one minus 0 0.89 for one. You square the difference. <coughs> You divide by the sum of the variance. This is the variance. 
okay and we have to do this for all the four tables we got four tables because we got four certification you do it for all the four tables so what happened now remember we're just doing for the a okay so the first one we got 0 0.01482 0 0.01482 0 0.01482 then we do the next table we got 0 0.05192 Next table 0 0.07001, then 0 0.02755. Finally, we get the breast flow the chi square. So what chi square is? It is the square of only the A. And the difference is small, only 0 0.164. If the difference is small, therefore all the tables are homogeneous. All the tables are homogeneous. So therefore, Okay, the original OS ratio is not much different with the, than the standardized OS ratio. Okay, I repeat, the original OS ratio, this one, is not much different than the standardized OS ratio, the common OS ratio. So, therefore, you can say that all the OS ratio are homogeneous. So, we sum up all the differences and check the p value from the cash variable. Now we have to look uh, for the degree of freedom of 3. Why? Because we've got 4 different tables, 4 stratum. Since the value is quite small, 0 0.164, p-value is not larger than 0.5. value is not larger than 0 0.5. So the all the OS ratio are sorry, all the OS ratio of the stratum are homogeneous. If they are homogeneous, therefore you do not have issues of interaction. Okay, and this one, when we check with the SPSS results, okay, breast load D is what, 0 0.164, okay, so we are okay, we are okay. This is the formula for the Theron adjustment, so this one is the calculation for Theron. Doctor tak kira ke? Okay. So when do we use Theron correction? Theron noted that by using the MH OS ratio estimator, instead of better condition maximum likelihood estimators, the breast flow did test statistic become like the conditional likelihood score test. So since the mental Hansel estimator is inefficient, Theron noted that the test statistic is stochastically larger than a chi square random number variable under the homogeneity hypothesis. So he said this paper derived the appropriate modification of the heterogeneity score test when the parameter of interest is estimated by an, in, by an inefficient but consistent estimator. So they came up with a Theron test. So why there is no manual calculation for this? <laughs> I cannot find any good reference that I can rely on to this to decipher all these statistical symbol. For the breast flow they test, I found one. So I use that. But for the Theron I cannot. Okay. So maybe for after I pension I enter statistics class and learn statistics and come up with another degree for myself. <laughs> okay, so finally, conclusion. Final conclusion. The Cochrane Mental Analyzer assumes odds ratio and test, uh, and if it is equivalent to 1, the Mental Analyzer estimate of the odds ratio averages the numerators and denominators before taking the ratio. So, the they take the average breast load data check if the odds ratio are indeed common using discrepancies in between the observed and expected cell counts Theron adjustment they claim that the odds ratio is inefficient therefore the it needs to be corrected the formula unfortunately is all greek to me so i give up <laughs> 
I really mean Greek. These are all Greek symbol, okay? I have no idea what the hell is this symbol stands for. So, at the end, these are all the analysis showing you using the chi-square and Cochrane mental hazard chi-square. So, this is the output that we get. Doctor, how come your output different than uh, the one here? Okay, because mine I was using version 17. Version 17 got uh, this kind of output. 21 different output. Okay. So at the end of the day, you get the odds ratio 2.16, 1.592, 2.14, 1.718. Uh, how come it's different? I deleted a lot of the tables that I don't want. Okay, odds ratio for the catecholamine, you end up with 2.861. This is a crude one. Okay, so you end up with the uh, bracelet, the adjusted OR of 1.891, and you end up with the uh, breast low of 0.164, so and so forth. Okay, so I already explained to you earlier on how to decide whether you, you have a confounding factor or not by using the the difference between the adjusted odds ratio and the crude odds ratio. So you got two, you got either EPID or stats formula. The only difference is the, the, the denominator. So which one to use? Use the Cochrane's mental enzyme. So even, if, uh, even after adjusting for H and ECG changes, the chi-square Cochrane mental enzyme is 4.19. And therefore, there is a significant association between catecholamine level and the coronary heart disease. Okay, so please say not, it's 4.15, here you got 4.19, 0 0.4, here you got 0 0.41. Okay, so this is the explanation. Okay. I came up with a table on how to calculate this manually. I'm not sure whether I gave to you all or not. If I did not give, just remind me. And this table calculate the chi square mental hazard manually. You end up with 4.153. Please take note, eh? Okay, uh, okay, okay, I got it. Okay. The issue here is the 3.510. What does the meaning of why we have this 4.19? Why this one is 3.5? Because if you do continuity correction, if you do continuity correction, you end up with the value of 3.510. So you can see here, I do the continuity correction. Okay. And they end up with a different mental handle formula. This is the formula. You see this one? Got continuity correction minus 0 0.5. And you get a different value. So please take note. Which one is the correct formula to use for Cochrane mental hazard? You have to use Cochrane. If you use mental hazard, you end up with the continuity correction. You end up with the continuity correction. Okay. So, don't ask me when to use continuity correction. You will only use the continuity correction. When any of the cell count in the system is zero then you do continuity correction. Why? Because if the value is zero, you cannot calculate the mental handle. That's why you have to do continuity correction. Okay. Sorry, I just realized I may not have given you the, this table. Ah, could you eh? Okay, now it's not really my own table. It's somebody else's table, but with my own data set. Okay. So I put yes. Become 3.51. I put no. It became 4.153. Which the data can change? Uh, the data inside the square you can change. Okay. 
Doctor, what the hell are you talking about here? There are two kind of mental Hansel tests. There are two kind of mental Hansel tests. What the hell am I talking about? This different mental Hansel test is meant for another thing. It is not meant for stratification. It is similar to chi square. Okay, so you got. Pearson chi square, you got mental hazard and you got yes related inside the stat cup. Doctor, stat cup double, refer back to your epic lecture. Your epic lecture cover the stat cup. It is under epic info. It is one of the many tools epidemiologists use to quickly calculate values. The mental hazard inside the stat cup is not for the controlling of confounders. It is not for the controlling of confounders. Instead, it is similar to chi-square. Okay. The only difference is they have this formula of n minus 1, ad minus bc squared. Then all the n outside is put in. Okay, thank you very much. Conclusion. There is significant relationship between catecholamine and coronary heart disease after adjusted simultaneously for H and ECG. The adjusted odds ratio is 1.9. Since the CI is between 1.02 and 3.49, does not include the value of 1. Therefore, it is significant. Those who are stressed have significantly higher risk of developing coronary heart disease. Okay, so don't worry, be happy, jangan stress, nanti mati high attack. Okay, even after adjusting for HN, ECG changes.